Assalamu alaikum. I'm, my name is Yashar Payami. I'm from Iran, really. And I want to know exactly is that you must have read Salman Rushdie's Satanic Verses. And as a Muslim, I, nobody would have liked that book. But, so what do you think Imam Khomeini did was, what he did was correct asking for the people for fatwa. That was my main point. What Imam Khomeini had told about the fatwa, that, uh, against, uh, fatwa against Salman Rushdie, was it correct or what? It was asked the question that what Imam Khomeini said regarding the fatwa of Salman Rushdie, is it right or wrong? My basic question is that why did Imam Khomeini give the fatwa one year later? The first country to ban the book of Salman Rushdie's satanic verses was India. And I congratulated Rajiv Gandhi for doing that act. Why should Khomeini give the fatwa of killing Salman Rushdie after one year? Because he was getting out of the news. All politicians. Politicians, if you wanted to give the fatwa, you should have given. The book was reviewed by so many parts of the world, so many countries banned it, and then he gives the fatwa, he should be killed. Whether right or wrong is afterwards, all the political gains. All political gains. All these things are political gains. But what Rajiv Gandhi did, maybe he didn't know about it, and I've given a talk on this issue of satanic verses. Though this book is banned in India, I've read that book. You know, Salman Rushdie, who claims that for namesake is a Muslim. He did not leave anyone. In his book, he even abuses Queen Elizabeth. And the same British government who had banned an American author for using a four-letter word, father, uncle, cousin, king, for the policy of Margaret Thatcher, that same Salman Rushdie, he makes it active and use ing. And yet the book is very popular. So one American author they banned because he uses a four-letter word for Margaret Thatcher. This another person, Salman Rushdie, makes it active, ING, for the same Margaret Thatcher's policy, but he gets an award. Why? Because he's maligning Islam, so they're very happy. And do you know, he even did not leave Ram and Sita. You know, these people are respected by the majority of the Indians. He even abused them. I don't want to use that word. He abused them also, he don't leave them. And many of the people are supporting. So maybe Rajiv Gandhi didn't know. But later on, if you read that book, you realize he did not leave anyone. So if a person who keeps on maligning, etc., Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 33, as to anyone who wages a war against Allah and his messenger, there are various options given, that you can either execute him, you can crucify him, chop off opposite limbs, or take him out of the country. And this law is not only in the Quran, it is even in the Bible. If you read the book of Leviticus, it says that anyone who blasphemes the law, you should stone that person to death. Even a passerby who is a stranger should stone that person to death who blasphemes the law. So this law is then all the religious scripture is not only there in Islam, in most of the religious scripture for blasphemy, whether it be Christianity, whether it be Islam, whether it be Judaism, for blasphemy, if it's a confirmed blasphemy, if it's that part of the country. We cannot give fatwas here. They should kill him, etc. If it's an Islamic state of law, if anyone blasphemeth, there are certain laws and rules and regulations laid down. But what politicians do, whether it be a Muslim politician or whether it be a non-Muslim politician, I'm sorry, I don't again want to hurt any politicians per se. If not all, I say majority. You find somewhere or the other they compromise for their own vote bank. And that's the reason that it is said that religion and politics that you pulls apart. They use religion as a plank to see to it that they get fame, etc. And that's what people do, which we people should be aware that the fatwa given by Khomeini, it was just a political gimmick according to me. But banning the book, what Rajiv Gandhi did, was perfect. He banned it, he was the first. And now they're thinking of removing the ban. I don't know whether the ban has come out or not. There's another statement that they're trying to remove the ban. But if anyone blasphemed the Lord in Islam, in Christianity, that person according to Christianity should be stoned to death in Islam. There are four options. You can even exile him. Christianity, no option. Christianity, only stoning to death. In Islam, there are four options you can choose. In Christianity, you have to stone that person to death. Hope that answers the question.